Rapid atrial pacing is a way to quickly end a re-entrant tachyarrhythmia if you have temporary atrial pacing wires. I've talked about the difference between re-entrant and automatic arrhythmias in another video, so go back and watch that if you need to. Briefly, re-entrant arrhythmias are a circuit of electricity through the heart resulting in an abnormal rate. They can be completely contained within the atria, contained entirely within the ventricle or AV node, or pass between both the atria and the ventricle. But since we are going to be using the atrial pacing wires to break the circuit, this only works with re-entrant circuits that pass through the atria. In a pediatric CICU, this mostly means atrial flutter and SVT. Rapid atrial pacing sends electricity across the re-entrant circuit, so when the circuit comes back around, it encounters tissue that has not repolarized and can't propagate the signal. The loop ends. We often think of using adenosine to break SVT. However, if you have pacing wires, rapid atrial pacing is faster than drawing up a medication and doesn't give the patient that sense of impending doom when their heart briefly stops when the adenosine blocks the AV node. Another disadvantage of adenosine is that it only works on re tachycardias that involve the AV node. If your patient has atrial flutter, adenosine will not terminate it. Defibrillation is also an option to terminate a re arrhythmia, but is painful and will require sedation. To rapid atrial pace, first trace the atrial wires from the patient to the box to make sure everything is hooked up correctly. The atrial wires will always exit the body on the patient's right side. Even when the heart is backwards, the surgeons will cross the wires internally so that the atrial wires exit to the right. The safety check is vital because rapid pacing the ventricle could leave you with a ventricular arrhythmia and CPR. Even if you do everything right, there is still a risk of putting the patient in a worse arrhythmia. So be prepared with a defibrillator in the vicinity. The steps to pace are going to depend on your pacer box. But for this system, hit unlock, main menu, then high rate. Notice it doesn't matter what mode the box is set to. This pacer was VVI, but now the atrial stimulation is lit up. Now we need to decide what rate we want to pace at. There is no exact science to picking a rate, but you need to pace faster than the arrhythmia rate by at least 10%. This pacemaker can pace as fast as 1,000 beats per minute. Turn the rate dial to set your rate. Notice the number at the top doesn't change. Read the rate down here. Pacing will only occur while you are holding the start button down. During this time, the pacemaker is not sensing, only pacing, and will not be inhibited by the patient's own rhythm. I usually start about 5 seconds of pacing, but that's a made-up number. This patient has atrial flutter with an atrial rate of about 300. This patient also has heart block with a junctional escape rhythm around 100. Here they are being atrially paced at a rate slightly less than 300, as seen by the black pacer spikes. Even if the patient didn't have heart block, rapid atrial pacing shouldn't result in a rapid ventricular rate, since the AV node can't conduct from the atria to the ventricles that fast. Since the rapid atrial pacing rate was slower than the atrial flutter rate, the arrhythmia is not terminated and continues after the pacing. So they try again at a much faster rate, and for longer, and the patient converts out of flutter. Using rapid atrial pacing to get a kid out of a rhythm does not guarantee that they won't quickly go back into it. Antiarrhythmic medications may still be needed for long-term control.